So, right? So as the Apostle Paul also makes clear, so the they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Okay. And this, this is the statement once saved, always saved. We'll revisit that shortly. Now, the plane of the soul. Jesus says in St. Matthew chapter 5 and 20, For I say unto you, except your righteousness exceed that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Wow. Mm. These are holy men in the community. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, verse 7 and 20, 7, 20, uh, 7, 22, uh, same Matthew 7, 22 and 23 says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in thy name have we cast out devils? And in thy name have done wonderful works? Then I will profess to them that I never knew you. Depart me. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Now, the plane of the soul are those who outside appear to be holy, are involved in all aspects of the church, only to seek glory for themselves. Yes. I ain't talking about nobody, y'all. Don't be trying to say I said something about somebody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on, I ain't talking about nobody. Come on, uh, they gain glory unto themselves by outward expressions of holiness, such as Jesus described in St. Matthew 6 and 5. Yes. He said, and when thou prayest, you should not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Yes, yes. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Yes, already. That reward is that their egos and their minds are appealed to. Yes. Mm. Boy, brother, that was a nice prayer that you said. Mm. Woo! Yeah. Boy, you know you said the words. Mm. But guess what? That's your reward. Yes. Because that's what you saw. That's your reward. Amen? Amen? They want their egos fed, and he gives instruction on sincere prayer. Verses 6 through 8. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father, which is in secret, and the Father which sees in secret shall reward thee what? Openly. He caused these also, and he, and he caused these so-called spiritual folk hypocrites. Mm -hmm. And in this case, leadership in synagogues and in our day churches. It could also, uh, it, it could also be lay people, as well as, act, uh, as, as, as well as who actively fake it in church. Yes, so we're talking about people from the pulpit to the door. Right. Churches all over the place. And they fake it in church. Yes. They fake it in church. Again, I talk about nobody. I'm just giving you the word of God. Now, this is more dangerous than walking on the plane of the flesh because in the plane of the flesh, their behavior does not change and it can be easily seen by believers. And when one is walking in the plane of the soul, they have an outward appearance of righteousness and humility. Mm -hmm. But inwardly are ravenous wolves, Matthew 7, 15. Here's the deal. When a person is walking on the planet of the soul, they fake having a renewed mind. All right. That's it. They fake having a renewed mind. The Apostle Paul reminds us in Romans chapter 12 and 2, where he says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. That you may prove or demonstrate what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When you are walking on the plane, and if you're walking on the spirit, if you're doing that which is true to God, you will demonstrate the will of God in your life. Right. Amen. Yes. You will. Yes. But when you're walking on the plane of the soul, you're faking. Mm. You're not really doing anything in your life, but you're faking it. Yes. And you make other folks see folks see that you're faking it. Mm. You know, they may not, they may think that you're straight and that you're such a holy person. Mm. You, you got folk that want to speak in tongues and all this other kind of stuff. And they do things that are unscriptural too. As, Re as Reverend James Ray said, you need to speak with the tongue that you got. You tell the desire to speak in an unknown tongue. Amen? <laughs> All these folks seem to exhibit these spiritual gifts just to let people see you. That's not what God wants. And that's not an example of being a, a faithful servant of Christ. God made us in his image and in his likeness. And because God is a triune being, meaning he is three parts, which is called the Godhead. God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. God is a three-part being also. And he, made, and he made us what we call a trichotomous being, which is being having three parts. We 
heart, body, soul, and spirit. Three parts. Body, soul, and spirit. Okay? We know that the body is flesh. It's a flesh part of our existence. A house for the spirit. A tent. A house, as Paul calls it. The soul, recognized by the Greek word psyche, P-S-Y-C-H-E, which gets its words like psychology, psychologist. It refers to the mind or mindset, thinking, attitude, makeup, conscious, or sensibility. That's what the word soul stands for. It is the very seat of your personality. What makes you tick? Mm. That's your soul. All right? It, uh, the soul is, you know, so, so it is who we are. Many seek to interchange the spirit and the soul together, but they are two distinct entities that make up the human being and cannot be interchanged. Amen. Regardless of what people tell you, you, the soul, and the spirit are not the same thing. No, they're not. And I'm going to give you the distinctions here. The soul cannot see, hear, or understand God. You, the soul, cannot see, hear, or understand God. It cannot. The spirit of a person is the bridge that links the soul to the spirit world. I'm going to try to make it clear. For you. The spirit of a person is the bridge that links the soul to the spirit world. Our spirit speaks to the Holy Spirit and translate information obtained, gathered, and brings it to our soul. Mm. However, when one is walking on the plane of the soul, his spirit cannot discern between the spirit of God or the spirit of the devil. That's why they do all kind of, they, 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 they wishy-washy. They double-minded. They, one minute they're doing something right, next minute they're doing something that's, wait, wait, what, they did what? Mm -hmm. They're not consistent. Mm -hmm. Amen? Now, Matthew 23 and 28, Jesus, it says, even so ye outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Matthew 23 and 33, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation or condemnation of heaven? Don't be, don't be on the plane of the soul. Hmm. Now, the plane of the spirit. Somebody said the plane of the spirit. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. What is Paul talking about here? A relationship with God. It is here where once saved, always saved, makes more sense, right? right? Amen. You must understand the believer in Christ is not condemned. You as the believer in Christ is not condemned. Amen. Prior to accepting Jesus Christ, you were condemned. But the believer in Christ is not condemned. Amen? Amen. So that's what's wonderful about this word. The understanding is that the believer has been declared righteous before God. The un uh, and his sins are not counted to him. Here's the most beautiful part, though. The believer that is not condemned and also is justified. Mm. His justification is viewed as never having committed any sins at all. Well, Listen to that. When you are not condemned and justified by God, that means that you have been declared. God, that word justified is a is a legalistic term. And you have not, you've been declared. Mm -hmm. God had hit the gavel. You're righteous. Mm -hmm. And every sin that you have committed have not been put to your charge. Oh, well. So now, when you go before God, again now, let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, starting verse 13 through 18, when Paul says, now, brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. Mm -hmm. When he speaks about Christ's second coming, mm -hmm. he does say that the Lord will bring with him, the Lord will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Right, right. Your spirit, when you die, because that is of God, goes straight to God. Right. Your body, which has to, you have to be judged after the second coming, the bodies will come up, and your body, you will have to be judged in the body. For what you've done for Christ in the body. Mm. For what you've done for Christ in the body. Which will determine the type of reward that you receive. All right. It is not the judgment that the world gets that don't believe. <laughs> That's the white throne judgment. We as Christians, we go before the Bible seat. All right. And we shall be judged based on what we've done for Christ in our body. Therefore, we shall not be held accountable for the sins that we have done in our life. But we will be, uh, we will get the type based on what we do for Christ in our bodies. Thus, that's what we shall be judged on.
So I determined what type of reward you shall get in heaven. Amen? You are not going to be judged based upon the things you did when you was unsaved. You have been declared righteous by the righteous judge. Amen. Now, I spoke about that. Uh, this is because, now, the white throne judgment, our ju and, and, and our judgment after the second coming of Christ, Christian will, will only be uh, of what we did for Christ in our bodies, which again is during the time of war. Not punishment we shall receive. This is because there is a regenerated, a regenerate, or converted mind. Mm. When you have regenerated, when you have a regenerate mind, yes. you have transformed your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm. As a child of God, when you're walking on the plane of the spirit, you are walking in the regenerate stage. You have a renewed mind. You are not the person that you used to be. You don't have to get involved in the sin that you used to get involved in. Right. You are no longer sin bound by sin. You are no longer a slave to sin, but a slave to whom? Christ. And you have been set free because of Christ. But you are not free to yourself to do whatever you want to do because you accepted Jesus Christ. Right. Oh no. You are a bond servant to Jesus Christ. And a bond servant give themselves over willfully to a master. Mm -hmm. All right. But because you are a bond servant, mm -hmm. you are a bond servant because you accept Jesus Christ, you allowed yourself to be uh, motivated by Jesus Christ because you have accepted him. Yes. That's the difference. You are a slave. You make yourself a slave of Christ. And that causes the renewal of your mind. Come on. So therefore you walk in the spirit and you exhibit the fruits of the spirit. All right. Amen? And then St. John chapter 1 and 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he the power or the right to become the sons or the children of God, even to them that believed in his name. If you walk in the plane of the Spirit, you will allow yourself to be moved and motivated by the Holy Spirit. St. John chapter 14, verses 15 through 17 and 21 says, Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. Amen. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide and dwell in you forever. Amen, right. When that abiding comes in, mm. if the Holy Spirit does not abide in you, you're none of his. Right. Simple. Mm. Simple. I'm talking truth. I don't believe just saying fact or fiction because maybe people have a fact here today and a fact is not a fact anymore tomorrow. But I'm talking about truth of God. This is the truth. And then he says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knoweth him, but you, somebody say you, yeah. you know him for he dwells in you and shall be in you, that he, had, uh, he that hath my commandments and keep them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself unto him. Amen. Walking in the spirit, and I'm close. Walking in the spirit, does three things that I want you to remember. Walking in the Spirit convinces you of Jesus Christ. Yes. It convinces you of Jesus Christ. So a person is walking and talking about being Christian, you know, and they tell you, well, I, well, there may be a Jesus, you know. You got a lot of folk who call themselves Christian and don't believe Jesus Christ is the Savior. They think that he is a man. You got churches that not like Jehovah's Witness, and all these other ones that say, yeah, we believe in Jesus Christ, but he's not the Savior. Well, why are you calling yourself a Christian? When you give yourself to Christ, one thing, it convinces you of Jesus Christ. That's number one. Number two, it convicts you to forsake the path of sin and cling to God. When you Accept Jesus Christ. The word convicts you. Understand something real quick. I'll let you know this. Many people believe that the word of God was given to us to, 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 to be a part of us that we are to follow God's law. Understand this. God's word was placed in all of our hearts from the creation of the earth. God only gave Moses the law just to show them to come into understanding of what was already inside of them. Right. What am I talking about? Well, 
uh, uh, Abraham, Abraham gave him a kill to that Katah. That was before the law was written. Yes. How did Melchizedek, uh, uh, Abraham know to give Melchizedek the time? That was before the law was even given. Yes. Yes. Joseph knew to withstand Potiphar's wife. Remember Potiphar's wife? Yes. Trying yes. to get with Joseph and he yes. said, back yes. off, I ain't trying to do that. Yes. That was before the law was written. Yes. God has instilled that conscience in all of you. His word is in you. But when you hear the gospel, the word that is in you need to connect with the Holy Spirit that's speaking, the Word of God that's coming forth. And when your spirit connects with you, the Spirit of God that's speaking, then you make a decision with Christ. Yes. Okay? The Word of God convicts you and lets you know. But if you decide you don't want, you want to continue to do the thing that you want to do, hmm. you want to continue to live the way you live and say, well, I'll go to God later on. Let me tell you something. Hmm. You can tell yourself or some family members can tell themselves and well, he's not ready yet. Oh, I'm not ready yet. I'll come to God later. Let me tell you something about the depravity of the mind. We are depraved individuals by flesh. Yes, and if we say, or a person say they don't want to come to God now, what guarantees that they're going to be ready to come to God next year? Or even if they live? Yes. Then they get so caught up in the wrong that they're doing that they're going to move farther and farther away from God. Yes. But, you got to be careful. Because even Romans chapter 1 said God gave them over uh -huh. to a reprobate mind. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. And their foolish hearts were darkened. And they, once they become darkened, All right. who can turn that light back on? Mm -hmm. Jesus said the gate to the body is the eye. Yes. And when that eye sees darkness, how great is that darkness? Mm -hmm. That means nothing is going to overcome it because God gave them over. Mm -hmm. He gave them over. So it convicts you. And then guess what? This is the most wonderful part. It covers you. Yeah. When you're walking in the spirit, mm, you're covered. No matter what comes your way, by way of lust or temptation, you will be protected and sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit forever. Why? Because you have not walked in the flesh. There's going to be situations where lustful things may come your way. The devil going to try to do all kinds of things to you. He going to try to tempt you through all measures that come around you. He's going to try it. But you do not have to subject to it. Why? Because he will give his angels charge over you. And in their hands they shall bear you up to guide you in all your ways. So that you're not stumble. To guide you in all your ways. Lest you dash your foot against the stone. That's the to guide you in all your ways. Mm. The word of the Lord will keep you in the way that you go. The Lord of God will lift you up no matter what's going on around your life. You got to understand that, brothers and sisters. Yeah. Yeah. Are you on the plane of the flesh? Yeah. Plane of the soul? Or plane of the spirit? Let's give the Lord a hand.